Seth, tell me this, what will Bob Knight's legacy be? Bob Knight was a complex man, there's no doubt about it, but you, know, you talk about one of the greatest basketball coaches. He's one of the greatest coaches of any sport of his time. Uh, he was an innovator. You think about the way the game's being played now, positionless basketball, flow, uh, the way the spacing that's used right now. He used that in the 60s, in the 60s. You think about the impact on the game. You know, Bob Knight hasn't coached in a really long time, yet his legacy is alive and well. Dusty May made the Final Four last year at FAU. Former Bob Knight manager. You think about Lawrence Frank, who just made a huge trade in the NBA. Former Bob Knight manager. You talk about Coach K. You talk about Steve Alford. You talk about all the great players. Uh, but Coach was a complex guy. Now, the discipline that he demanded from his players, sometimes he didn't display that same discipline in his own coaching, in his own approach, whether it was player interactions, dealing with the media, or dealing with officials. So, you know, he was a complex guy, but he was an amazing coach. And the one thing you have to understand is the impact that he did have in a positive way on his players. Because when you saw him come back to Assembly Hall last year and you saw Isaiah Thomas and Randy Whitman and Mike Woodson and Keith Smart and Quinn Buckner, if you ask any of those guys, any of those guys, if they had one phone call to make, if they had an issue, who would they call? It would be Coach Knight. He was brilliant, but like all of us, he did have flaws. Coach, um, always appreciate you on the show and always appreciate the great work that you do for the network, particularly on college basketball game day and all of that stuff. And I know you know what you're talking about because Isaiah Thomas and Quinn Buckner over the years have always articulated what you just said about Bob Knight. God bless him and his family. Um, I would ask you this. When we think about 11 Big Ten titles, five Final Four appearances, three national titles, one of the things that people don't, remember, don't even realize about Bobby Knight was so miraculous about his illustrious coaching career is that he only coached one NBA All-Star in his entire career, and that was Isaiah Thomas. He had never coached another NBA All-Star. That level of success, bereft of that level of talent, you got to you just marvel at it. Having said all of that, I want I'd like to know from you personally, knowing basketball and being connected to the college game as you are. What has it been like for you having to talk about Bobby Knight as his days waned? I'm not talking about immediately, just recently. I'm talking about the kind of narrative that's been out there about him over the last several years because of all the other stuff that came with them. What is that? What was that like for you, knowing the game and loving the game as much as you did? Well, knowing the game and loving the game, and also knowing Coach Knight and having respect for my former right. college coach, Al Ababo, was a Bob Knight assistant at Army. Uh, so, I mean, uh, I had a chance when when I was a player, Coach Knight would come in and do these clinics, and you know, I was one of his demonstrators. Uh, coach Knight was a coach. As a coach, he was someone we all looked up to because he set a standard, held his team to the standard. He was innovative. He was a brilliant brilliant coach. Uh, he was also a complex guy, like I said before, Stephen, I like when, when, when Virginia Tech had a game and Bob Knight was on the call, Coach Knight would come and watch practice the day of the, of the game. He would sit up in the stands. He wouldn't come down on the floor. So I would send my daughter Paige up to, to see him, to see if he needed anything. Every single time he came back to Virginia Tech, every single time, if Paige wasn't there, he'd be like, oh, where the hell's Paige? Why isn't she here today? I mean, like, that's who he was. He was a very complex, different guy. But in terms of the impact of the game, the impact of how we did what we did, uh, Bob Knight had a huge impact. But the lack of discipline, and I, you know, I say this all the time, you can coach your players hard. If you have a real relationship with them, you can coach them hard. The one thing you can't do, you can't put your hands on your players. And that, in the end, was his downfall. Also, his inability to control himself in the heat of the moment at times. Now, look, we all have flaws. Uh, there's no doubt about it. As a coach, as a tactician, as an innovator, as someone who loved his players despite everything that went on, Bob Knight was at the very highest level. But like all of us, there are times that I think he would, if he looked back and was honest with himself, he said, I would think he would say, I wish I did it differently. His legacy is one of the great coaches in the history of sport. There's no denying that.
Coach, we love the NBA. Despite the fact that you cover college sports, you know the NBA, you love the NBA, you know how much I love the NBA. We all love the NBA. The younger generation just gravitates to it. But I, I, I've always been, uh, 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 I just smirk and I say, my goodness, the quote that he said about the NBA one day, I got to read this to you. If the NBA was on Channel 5 and a bunch of frogs making love were on Channel 4, <laughs> I'd watch the frogs, even if they were coming in fuzzy. That's what quote that Bobby Knight once said. What was his issue with the NBA? I think it's probably lack of control. I think in the NBA, you you put your team in a system, and then you they, they you know the players are going to go make plays. I think in in college you have greater control. I think probably uh, the prism in which he looked at the game was different. Like here's another thing, Bob Knight was an innovator. Preparation. If you look at the preparation of games in the Big Ten today, it started with Indiana's preparation. But yeah, I think that. Bob Knight was a purist. Uh, the NBA is a more of a player's game. Not that there are great coaches, because great coaches understand how to put those players in position to play to their strengths and use the tremendous talents that the players have today. Bob Knight, as you said, only one uh, all-star. Well, you know what? He had to find ways to hide guys' weaknesses and basically show off what they did well. And I think in the NBA, the game is just a totally different game. Yet, Yet, Stephen A., what did he do with that Olympic team? Yeah, no doubt. So no he doubt. can coach good players now. That's right. You know, tricky players make tricky coaches. If you take a tricky coach and tricky players, you win gold medals. Well, remember, Molly, what he said, draft Michael Jordan. You know, they say, well, we need a center. He said, draft Michael Jordan and play him at center. <laughs> that's what he said. That's, my, that's, that's Bob Knight. That's great Bob one-liners. Uh, coach, great to have you with us. Thank you so much for your perspective this morning. We really appreciate it and looking forward to talking to you, you again coach. on a much happier Thanks note for having very me. soon. Appreciate it. Right. Legendary basketball coach Bobby Knight has died at the age of 83. Our sincerest condolences. Our heart goes out to all his loved ones.